Yeah. You know, so this is Admiral Smurfs, and I just want to show you exactly what I do when I use my Warlock of Destruct for destruction on BFA patch 8.0.1, and it's currently what I'm using to do all my gearing in dungeons, and I might be using this macro in raids in the future. And I'm gonna show you some other cool things. So I'm gonna try to make it as quick and concise as possible. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick look at what I'm operating with first of all. So I'm using Logitech gaming software to use my auto hotkey. A lot of some people use auto hotkey, other people use the Logitech gaming software, other people have you know, Corsair software because I use this for um, my key macros um, for my keyboard and I use macros on my mouse as well. Specifically I use these three buttons. I use the middle button over here to pretty much talk to my teammates. Um, I edit these buttons essentially to become keys on my keyboard and then I toggle these keys at 100 milliseconds usually sometimes a little bit quicker maybe 30 milliseconds um, per macro it really depends on the macros in my experience it's, um, my macros work a little bit better if I'm running them at 100 milliseconds if it's a sequential macro if it's a priority list macro I really want to run as fast as possible so I try to go down to like 30 ms if possible with all these things you gotta test it out yourself and see what works best for you and as you see I adjust these as I go the first two had um, toggle features for the auto clicker um, the third one did not just because that's how these things work so I'm gonna go to my warlock and I'm gonna want to turn this one on because that's what I use for my warlock every different character I have has different keys so um, I use twitch to update all my add-ons, I suggest you do it too. It's amazing. Use Discord, and this is the Corsair key macro that I have. I can share this with you guys if someone uses Corsair. Just give me, just give me a DM, and I'll be happy to share it with you. Um, okay, so let's get started. Alright guys, so welcome. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to try to make a beautiful video for you guys that will quickly, concisely, basically explain to you how I use my macros. Um, essentially, let's just talk about damage windows for a second. Warlock, the Destruction Warlock has a bunch of damage windows that you have to keep track of in order to maximize your output. Um, the, I'm just going to briefly explain them. Um, and obviously you want to go to Wild Hunt, Icy Veins, whatever it is to just learn more if you have a lot of questions about the Warlocks internal mechanics. But basically, we have Immolate, which gives a, a, puts a dot on the target for 18 seconds, and the periodic damage generates one Soul Shard, soul shard Fragment and has a 50% chance to grant an additional Soul Shard on critical strikes. So this is very important. You have to always keep emulate on your target. Always. There's no excuse to not have emulate. This is if you are not generating shards, you are losing DPS, and then you are not getting the full benefit of this macro. And that's why you will see emulate on pretty much every one of my DPS macros in some modified format. I want to put on a mod because I do not trust the macro to cast this. Essentially, I tested it a bunch. The macros um, will either overcast or undercast emulate. I'd rather just have you look at that and make and make a decision of what needs to be done. Havoc, um, you when this is huge for single target spells. You need to learn how to use this. Um, you want to make make sure that well, anytime you cast havoc, that you're doing so on chaos bolts, unless you desperately need shards for one more chaos bolt to like kill the boss at one percent HP. That's the only other scenario I could think of. You want to use havoc for incinerate. You want to use havoc for chaos bolts. It's a 10 second damage window um, that essentially lets you duplicate that spell on another target for 60% of the normal initial damage. So you do 100k of damage on one Chaos Bolt to like one target, you'll do 60k of that to the, to the target you're Havocing. Um, very important that you understand the GCD cooldown changes for the Warlock because you do not want to cast Havoc at the start of the Splendor rotation. You want to cast Havoc 
after um, the spell has casted Inferno, the Summon Inferno, after this, um, the macro has casted Dark Soul and Stability, because they are on the GCD, and essentially you'll lose two seconds of time on your 10 second damage window if you have to cast those two, if you cast Havoc, Dark Soul, Stability, and then you cast. Let's see, Havoc, Dark Soul, Instability, and then Summon Infernal. That will waste effectively two to three seconds of time because the Havoc has its GCD. Um, I'll just show that to you. Actually, I'll show it to you in a little bit. Havoc has its GCD, Dark Soul, Stability, and so does Summon Infernal. So you have to keep that in, um, in your consciousness. When you're casting Havoc, wait for these cooldowns to go off. You, you, I'm going to look into getting weak orders for this. You should do that as well. Um, the next damage window that you want to sort of look at is Summon Inferno. Um, the Inferno will, will, um, comes down, stuns, does damage to the target. Um, it stays for 30 seconds. It generates one soul shard fragment every 0 0.5 seconds. So what you want to do is that you want to make sure after you cast this, that you cast your Havoc. And then you start spanning your chaos bolts at five shards, um, because you might be able to generate enough shards. You will probably to use a third chaos bolt, especially if you have haste, um, berserking like for troll for like what trolls have, uh, maybe bloodlust. You'll definitely get those three off if you do it in correct succession. Um, the next damage one that I want to show you is rain of fire. Brings down a rain of fire for 7.7 .7 seconds on an area. Um, Cataclysm, it, um, enemies within the area, 8 yards, will be affected with immolate. 18 seconds of immolate. Beautiful. Um, another damage window is eradication. It's the town that I'm currently running with. Chaos Bolt increases the damage you deal to the target for 10 for, by 10% for 7 seconds. So this is duplicated by Havoc as well. So if you cast Chaos Bolt on two targets, um, they'll get applied with this er eradication debuff. All damage you do from that point for seven seconds thereafter will be increased by 10%, which is huge. You need to be able to use this. Um, and you need to be conscious in its window to maximize its effect. It gets refreshed with every Chaos Bolt. So you shoot a Chaos Bolt out um, and you have seven seconds to shoot another one out to keep up the target, uh, to keep up the debuff. Um, Internal combustion. When you shoot that chaos bolt to the target and it has that emulate timer, it reduces that emulate timer up to by five seconds and incorporates that damage into the chaos bolt damage. And yes, this is duplicated by havoc as well. Um, and that's something that you have to be aware of because that's how you make your damage here. Now, how do I use these macros? I have three macros I'm currently using: a builder, single target bolts, and AOE. And then I have a pet macro that I'll show you. The builder macro is very simple. It, ca um, all, it has Cataclysm with the alt, um, wherever your target is aimed. And I prefer this generally um, to my AOE macro because I'm usually spamming my builder macro and that's why I included it like this. Because uh, when I'm using the builder, I want it to be my general go-to for all these things. And not in every scenario I'm going to want to use Rain of Fire. The only time I want to use Rain of Fire, the AoE macro, is when there's three plus targets and I can gain the benefit of using Rain of Macro, excuse me, Rain of Fire, Rain of Macro as well. Kind of trying to do that it's with DSC, but that's a separate topic. Um, essentially, this is what I used to, to build my um, shards. It can, um, you need to use emulate on your own accord. It's not included into the macro because I don't want it to overcast because if it's overcasted, you're losing DPS. And I don't want it to undercast because then you're losing DPS. I tried it a bunch of times. You can go to the form. You can see all the different builds I made. There's actually some very nice ones that kind of keeps it up consistently. But ultimately, I want to raid. I want to do dungeons. I want to be the top of the meters. I want to be able to control this myself. Um, so that's why I put it there. It summons Infernal. It conflags, that's um, something that I forgot to mention in terms of the damage windows. Conflagrate reduces the cast time of your next incinerate chaos bolt by 30% for 10 seconds. It generates a maximum of 5 soul shard fragments and has 2 charges. What what you want to do is that you want to conflag at, before using incinerate or before using chaos bolt because it reduces that cast time and obviously less cast time, more cast, more damage. 
Um, I have Firebolt from the pet included in here because I want my imp to cast Firebolt as consistently and as much as possible. If you leave Wild to do it on an automatic basis, it is not consistent. Test this out yourself. I don't not, I don't want to just show you that right here, but yes, War, uh, um, Warlock imps are very inconsistent in their damage. Um, if you have a spammer included in there to your macro, it helps a lot and it pretty much doubles up your incinerate damage. Incinerate damage does 2,121 fire damage. Firebolt does 1,820 damage to the target. And this is something obviously you wanna, it can crit. This is something you want to, you want to be using as much as possible. And if you leave it to WoW, it, it'll miss a, a cast here and there. So. In order to maximize that cast that's on a separate GCD, I include it here. Um, all right, that's the builder. The next one would be the single target destruction bolts, which is my main spender. I'm trying to use chaos bolt spams, knock into these people's faces. Um, again, it has Emily and Cataclysm. I always want this in as much as possible in these two because this is my bread and butter in terms of generating shards. Um, that's the bread, and this is the butter. All right, um, it summons Inferno and Dark Soul Instability on a priority list. Um, so if it's up, it's gonna summon it and, and cast it as soon as possible. Then Conflagrate, and then Chaos Bolts, and then also Fire Bolts are nested here as well. I do it like this because I want to always have my cooldowns on use when I'm using this macro. So that is the goal of that. Obviously, if the GCD proc comes off, it might skip this line when it's up and then it can flag first or, or chaos ball first before it can flag. That's something that you might want to track. Um, and an easy way to assure that you always use conflagrate is essentially to move while casting this. That's one of, probably one of the biggest things I learned. So my builder has conflag on it as well. Most of the warlock spells you have will not function if you are moving except conflag because it's an instant cast spell. Um, let me just go back here. So it's an instant cast spell that triggers an explosion on the target immediately. So watch me, this is my builder macro. It is casting come flag on cooldown and the other things. So, and just for the purpose of continuing with this, I'm gonna emulate. This is the builder macro and it's, and it's casting. Now that I have five shards, I'm gonna stop using that cast havoc Go to this guy and start using my single target destruction bolts macro. The the other guy is essentially building shards for me. And there you go. I was able to get two chaos bolts out on the target. I'm out of shards. So now I'm going to go back to the builder macro. Incinerate, this target doesn't have emulate. So I'm going to click control on that one. Click control on this one. Come back to my main target, um, charge it up. Let's just watch, uh, watch it as it runs. As you can see, my imp's power bar is going down constantly, which is what I, exactly what I want. I want it to freaking work for me, damn it. Okay, so I'm up again, Havoc. I stop the builder. I initiate the single target destruction bolts, and here we go, constantly. A little uh, of a delay. It's eating up my emulate, so I have to keep that up. I click control to keep that up. Um, in terms of AOE scenarios, I'm just gonna, again, build with with um, my builder macro. I could build with my AOE macro. Um, no, I did make it in such a way that I can do that. So when you, you cast the AOE macro, it's gonna want to automatically cast Cataclysm where you are aiming your mouse. You do not want to do this without aiming your mouse somewhere first. Before you use AOE, please aim your mouse where your target is or else you're gonna lose DPS. And it essentially casts Rate of Fire and incinerates on cooldown. And Cataclysm on cooldown, which is great. It casts the flags in there. Um, it's nice, I like it. But personally, I, I use uh, the Builder macro a little bit more um, that being said, those are my main three macros, bread and butter. That's what I'm doing um, while I'm doing DPS. A notable mention is, is my other macro. Let me just emulate this guy just so I could get shards. Emulate this guy too. 
So, when yeah. I hit, it reduces the DPS you're doing. It prolongs it because you're moving, you're dodging, you're stunning. You're um when they punch you, it, it causes a stagger on your cast bar. So you so I have a pet tank macro that I cast manually sometimes. Sometimes I do not because it just comes down to what am I feeling like? Am I feeling like click, clicking this myself or not? So I have it on my Q bar, which is next to my tab, which makes for easy switching. So you see, let's say this mob is about to die. I can go to the next one, click Q or spam Q and here it comes. And it's going to cast every single ability that the Void Walker has on um, its cooldown essentially. And it's amazing. I love this thing. This made world questing for me. This made leveling for me so much more fun. Um, I highly gar guarantee you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy it. I freaking love this thing. So definitely have a look at that as you're using this because it just adds a whole bunch of joy to me that I have so much control in terms of where the enemy packs are going. Obviously, if you're fighting a 122 boss, 123 boss, this guy, little guy is not going to do the same thing as a uh, protection paladin, for example. But in terms of world content, it's really good. I like it. It's really nice. So give that a go. So yeah, this is Atomos Mars. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for visiting and you have a beautiful day.